parallel universes have long been speculated to exist self-contained realities that coexist with our own. They are described as occupying the same space, but within a different plane of existence. A different dimension. These other worlds may be very similar to our own, with only slight changes marking them out as different. Or they can be completely dissimilar. Mind-boggling to consider, the notion of parallel or alternate universes that brush up against our own suggests that reality is non-linear, not singular, and is instead layered and infinitely complicated. And at the extreme end of belief in a multiverse made up of many different realities, it is suggested that travel between different universes is not merely possible but has been achieved, and that we may just have been visited by others from parallel universes. Before we begin, I'd like to say a quick thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. NordVPN is a service that I personally use to protect my online activity. Later in the video, I'll explain more, including how you can get a huge discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash paranormalscholar, as well as an extra month free when you use my code paranormalscholar. In 2008, a Spanish woman using the alias Lorena Garcia Gordo posted an unusual experience online in order to find help. With the stated risk of sounding psychotic, she described how she believed she had jumped into a parallel universe. One day, she wrote, I woke up and everything was different. According to her testimony, many small things had changed in her life. It started with her bedsheets being different when she awoke in the morning, a change which, at first, she did not give any importance. Then, when she went to her office, a place where she had worked for the past 20 years, she was shocked to discover it was not hers. When she looked at the directory, her office was in a completely different location, in a different department to the one she claimed to know. Uncomfortable, she supposedly took a day off and, feeling as though she barely knew herself, went to get tested for drugs and alcohol, the results of which came back clean. From there on, she discovered many differences in the world to that which she had known. The boyfriend she had broken up with six months prior was still with her, and the partner she thought she actually had no longer existed. Even after she hired a private detective, nothing could be found out about him. Gordo continued to list differences. Apparently, a shoulder operation she believed her sister had undergone had never really happened. A New Year's Eve she remembered spending in Madrid was remembered by her friends as having been spent in an entirely different location. In her apartment were photographs of her that she never remembered having been taken. She even claimed to remember an attack in France which would not happen until several years after the post was originally made. In her posts, Gordo acknowledged the extraordinary nature of her claims, and went on to state that she had been evaluated by psychiatrists who attributed her claims to stress-induced hallucinations. She herself claimed to be a psychologist, and wrote that this could not be the case, as there were physical symptoms, such as considerable weight gain, that she could not account for. Her soul, it seemed, had transplanted into another version of herself. In the years since, she has defended her account, and her case has been featured on television in English and Spanish. Gordo has claimed, however, that her story has been constantly misrepresented, and that she has even been offered payment to deny her story, the motive for which she claims she does not understand. From Gordo's blog, one gets a sense that this experience has completely shaken her concept of reality. Which, if one begins to meditate on the notion of a multiverse and interdimensional travel, is entirely understandable. A wonderful thing happened, wrote the medieval chronicler Ralph of Coggeshaw about an event that occurred in 12th century England, near the village of Woolpit in Suffolk. There, a young boy and girl, completely green in their persons and clad in garments of a strange colour and unknown materials, were found near the mouth of a pit. Both of the children were incredibly frightened, and no one could understand their speech. As such, they were taken as curiosities to the house of the knight Sir Richard de Calm. There, they wept uncontrollably. Bread and other foods were supposedly brought to them in an attempt to soothe them, but they would not touch anything. 
Then, when beanstalks were brought into the house, they showed great interest in them. Immediately, the children are said to have seized the stalks and split them open, expecting to find sustenance within. When there was none, they began to cry again, until they were consoled by others who showed them the beans were in the pods. According to the Chronicle, they fed on the beans with delight, and for a long time tasted no other food. Both of them were welcomed into the household of the night, and soon afterwards were baptised. Unfortunately, the young boy remained languid and depressed, and died shortly after his baptism. The girl, however, is said to have survived, and grew up in the household of the night, reportedly being rather loose and wanton in her conduct. As she began eating other foods such as bread, the unusual green colour of her skin is said to have faded away until she looked like any other woman. She learned the local language, and when she grew up was married to a man and lived for many years. During her life, she was asked many questions about her origins, the answers to which have been recorded in the Chronicle. Her stories were fantastical, especially for the times. She described having come from a different land. There, she explained all the inhabitants of her country had green skin like her, and that they did not have sunshine as they did in this land. Rather, her world was little cheered by sunlight, and instead existed in a state of twilight, that time which exists in our world just before the sunrise and after the sun sets. She is recorded as saying that she and her brother were one day following their flock, when they decided to explore a nearby cave. Upon entering, they heard a delightful sound of bells, which they followed for a long time until they came out through another mouth of the cavern. There, they were both struck senseless by the excessive light of the sun and the unusual temperature of the air, until they were found. This strange story of the green children is not only chronicled by Ralph of Coggeshall, but also by William of Newborough, another reputable chronicler of the time. Not merely is the tale's provenance impressive, having been taken seriously by two chroniclers, but the story itself. It can be said to be extraordinary in how unsuited it is to the medieval mind. It is typical for people in all times to attempt to mould inexplicable phenomena and see it through the lens of contemporary understanding. An example can be said to be extraterrestrial sightings, which, presently, are accorded to beings from outer space. In the past, and in keeping with a more religious worldview, such entities would have more likely been regarded as angels. In the case of the Green Children, one would have expected a contemporary explanation to have been shaped by belief in witchcraft, religiosity, or even mythical creatures. However, the story is recounted in a very matter-of-fact way, even scientific at times. For example, how the changing of the girl's skin colour from green to normal was explained as being the natural effect of our food. From a modern perspective, diet is scientifically known to affect the colour of skin. For example, ingesting too much silver can turn the skin blue. And there was even a case of a man's skin turning green in China after contracting parasites from eating too many river snails. There is also a certain type of anemia, known historically as green sickness, that is caused by bad diet which can change the colour of the skin to green. And so, the children's discomfort when presented with certain foods does seem to indicate that they may have had a very different diet, wherever it is that they came from, and that it was these different foodstuffs which kept their skin green. Another intriguing element of the case which adds credence to the story is the children's inability to understand the local language. If not from the other land which the girl later claimed, where had they come from? The case of the green children of Woolpit is a surprisingly simple tale of children being mesmerised by the beautiful chiming of bells, which drew them into another world. In this other world, the young girl was cared for, and eventually grew up to be like everyone else around her. There is nothing sensational about them personally. They were just ordinary children that were confused and highly disturbed by the sight of a new world they had accidentally wandered into, as anyone would assumably be. Ultimately, the believability of this strange story can be said to come from just how extraordinarily simple it is. In the 1970s, Ivan T. Sanderson, a British biologist who authored material on a wide variety of paranormal subjects, wrote an article entitled The Twelve Devil's Graveyards Around the World. 
In it, he elaborated on an earlier proposition, the existence of vile vortices, namely, equally spaced areas on the surface of the Earth where funny things happen. The funny things, Sanderson wrote, were sudden disappearances of individuals, ships and planes that left no trace. In his article, he identified 12 such vortices, 5 being located on the same latitude to the south of the equator and 5 on the same latitude to the north, including the notorious Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Sea. The other two were claimed to be the North and South Poles. In addition to unexplained disappearances, these locations are characterized by electromagnetic anomalies. Sanderson theorized that due to these peculiar disturbances, one could step through a so-called vile vortex and disappear, and quite possibly travel to an alternate universe. Sanderson's research is by no means singular. Physicists have suggested that, in addition to stellar black holes, namely the final stage in the lifespan of a star, primordial black holes exist also. These holes, far from being the collapse of a star, are instead suggested to be wrinkles in space-time that have been in place since the start of the universe. According to the Austrian mathematician Kurt Gödel, such holes could feasibly bore a tunnel through time and space, and thus facilitate interdimensional travel, much the same as Sanderson proposed for his vile vortices. The science behind such primordial black holes, whilst massively complex, can be simplified to this. As the gravitational forces within a black hole are so enormous, space and time can form a singularity a ring around a central hole through which one can theoretically pass from one space and time field to another. And so, if primordial black holes do exist, as science is increasingly coming to believe, there is a possibility for travel to universes other than our own. More sinisterly is the idea that someone or something from one of these alternate universes could also travel, and perhaps even unintentionally bleed through from their side to ours. By deforming space-time, black holes are able to bend light. With a gravitational pull so intense that nothing can escape, even light is consumed. In this way, it could be argued that shadow figures, a commonly reported type of paranormal phenomenon, are light-starved images of people from another universe, interdimensional fragments that have refracted through a primordial black hole from a parallel world. Invariably described as featureless humanoid figures that either manifest as full-body entities or are glimpsed in the experience's peripheral vision, shadow people are widely reported. One such report comes from a witness called Michael, who, according to his testimony, encountered a terrifying shadowy spectre in the autumn of 1998. He had recently moved into a new house and, after spending the day painting with his friends, fell asleep in a beanbag chair. It was still night when he woke, and so he moved through the darkness to the kitchen to get a drink of water. It was then, so goes Michael's story, that he got a distinct feeling that someone was watching him. At the top of the basement stairs and in front of the light switch, he claims he saw a figure, a figure which he initially assumed was his good friend Larry. When the figure did not respond to his calling, his guard went up. Still absolutely convinced he was looking at a living person, Michael describes taking out his pocket knife so as to defend himself from the intruder. Only, it was no intruder, at least not of the earthly variety. According to Michael's testimony, the shadowy figure approached him and his extended knife, not stopping, and moved into and through his arm. Terrified, he watched as the shadow continued at an almost leisurely pace away from him, and proceeded through the large kitchen, into the adjoining dining room, and finally through the wall that would have led outside if it were a door. When he turned on the light switch, he was disturbed to find no trace of the figure. Michael's experience is not atypical. Many people report similar encounters with shadow beings. Most intriguing is how the figures are often described as being made of a substance that is darker than dark, blacker than night, almost as if all of the light has been sucked out of them, much like how a black hole would devour light. Shadow figures being interdimensional beings is a concept that is affirmed by several self-proclaimed psychics and spiritual healers. One such believer, a professional psychic from New Zealand called Natalia Kuna, 
describe shadow people as conscious, intelligent interdimensional beings that can shapeshift into various forms and figurations, and move back and forth between dimensions. And so, are shadow figures complex interdimensional entities that exist in the space between realities? Or are they bleed through from another universe, shadows of people like you and I, who may not even be aware that they are refracting across dimensions? What is said to be amongst the best evidence for the existence of parallel universes can be found in a sensational article printed in the 1852 Yearbook of Facts in Science and Art. Titled A New Man, the article describes the curious discovery made in a small village near the German town of Frankfurt an der Oder. There, it is said that villagers found a man wandering, aimlessly, who spoke a very rough form of German that was unlike anything in the area. They took him to the burgomaster of Frankfurt an der Oder, where, upon being questioned, he revealed that his name was Jopar Vorin, and that he had come from a country called Laxaria, situated in the portion of the world called Sacria. Vorin could not understand any of the major European languages, except for the rough German which he spoke. He could only speak Laxarian and Abramian, languages from his world which must have bore some similarities to German. When asked about his beliefs, Vorin described his religion as Ispatian, which, it was discovered, was similar to Christianity. Despite those cultural differences, there were said to be many geographical differences between his world and this one. Laxaria, Vorin claimed, was many miles away from Europe, and was separated by vast oceans. Furthermore, he described his world as being divided into five great compartments – Sacria, Aflar, Aslar, Orslar, and Euplar. As to why he was there, he alleged to have been shipwrecked after he embarked on a journey to find his long-lost brother. Despite attempts to understand him, the position of his route and destination were impossible to ascertain on any map. To many, it seemed as though he had come from a different universe. The authorities are said to have questioned Vorin intensely. Ultimately, they came to the conclusion that he was sane and telling the truth after which they dispatched him to Berlin, where he became the subject of much scientific and curious gossip. The article in the yearbook, rather unsatisfyingly, leaves Vorin's story there. In another version of the tale, it is said that Vorin jumped out of the carriage on the way to Berlin in a fit of hysteria and disappeared afterwards. In terms of an explanation for this strange case, the yearbook of 1852 proposes that Vorin's peculiar history might have been constructed by the villagers. Such collective connivory is of course impossible to disprove, but such fraud would be entirely without motive, aside from casual cruelty and or mischief. The unusual traveller is not reported as having asked for financial or material assistance from the authorities. He was simply just as confused as they were. Another possibility, perhaps more likely, that could explain Vorin's existence is that he was a spy and had concocted the entire story as a cover. Elaborate as it may seem, spies were often highly educated individuals, and this was an age of intensive espionage, as empires vied for control of the world. To be taken to Berlin may have been Vorin's objective the entire time, this being a time when German unification was an ongoing process that would have intrigued many great powers of the period. However, such an explanation is speculative. Many do believe that since Vorin had been thoroughly examined by authorities, he was telling the truth. Could it be that Jopar Vorin was a man from another world, as he claimed? It could be said that there is nothing more terrifying than interdimensional travellers, creeping shadowy figures who slip in and out of our reality, motives unclear and origins obscure. One of the worst forms of interdimensional interlopers are those who seek to supplant us, to manifest from the shadows to steal our information and impersonate us. In the modern era, this risk is arguably greater than ever before. Every time we use the internet, we put ourselves at risk of suffering at the hands of malicious interlopers, hackers, and even governments who want to monopolize, sell, and exploit our personal information. In this way, a VPN, a virtual private network, can offer protection and keep you and your online information safe by scrambling your personal data so that third parties can't view or misuse it. NordVPN is one such service provider. 
With next-generation military-grade encryption, there is no better service. Your information is safe behind a protective wall that not even the most aggressive interdimensional entity could penetrate. As you can imagine, I use the internet a lot to help inform my research, and the very nature of paranormal investigation requires me to travel along some very strange and dark internet alleyways. I personally use and trust NordVPN to keep my data safe, and with ultra-fast connection, there is no need to sacrifice speed. Once you switch on Nord, it will find the fastest server in your chosen country, which, by the way, there are over 60 to choose from. Switching servers couldn't be easier. Another great feature beyond security is that NordVPN allows you to access content that might otherwise be restricted in your location. Simply switch country and bypass pesky geographical restrictions. As researchers of the paranormal, we are hardly going to tolerate being restrained by earthly rules. I'm excited to say that you can get a huge discount on a two-year plan of NordVPN by visiting my exclusive URL, nordvpn.com slash paranormalscholar. And when you use my code, paranormalscholar, you'll get an extra month free. Do consider protecting your online data today. Don't wait until it's too late. That's nordvpn.com slash paranormalscholar. Mention Bigfoot and images of large, hair-covered, flesh-and-blood creatures populate the mind. Of all the cryptids said to stalk the underexplored corners of the Earth, none are as famous as this bipedal ape-like being. For many who have sighted Sasquatch, there is no doubt that the creature is real, with most who believe in the beast's existence supposing it to be an as-of-yet, scientifically recognised, species of massive ape. After all, such would not be unheard of. There are plenty of animals only just being discovered by scientists, even in our perceived era of advancement. And yet, for all of this, there is another school of thought, fiercely defended, with the flame being kept alive by a handful of researchers, who believe that whilst Bigfoot as a species is real, the creatures are not animals at all, at least not like those that we know and share our planet with. Rather, Bigfoot are creatures altogether different, and may not even be from our planet. For certain researchers, the Bigfoot is an interdimensional being from an alternate universe. When trying to prove the existence of Sasquatch, the lack of physical evidence is a huge issue. Blurry photographs and footage, dubious plaster casts of abnormally large footprints, remnants of unusual rock pile shelters, and an abundance of eyewitness testimonies are simply not enough to convince materialistically minded scientists as to the hairy biped's existence. A cadaver, or indeed a living specimen, is necessary. And yet, there are those who argue that such will never be found, and the reason for this is not that Bigfoot aren't real, but merely that they do not belong to our reality. A bold and ludicrous sounding claim indeed, and yet there are many Bigfoot researchers who have dedicated decades of their lives to their work who are deadly serious. The crux of the interdimensional Bigfoot hypothesis can be found in what is referred to as crossover phenomena, namely the sorts of strange happenings that appear to be emblematic of a particular type of paranormal phenomenon, but are in fact typical of a variety of extranormal reports, with the crossover being either ignored or unseen by researchers. In real terms, phenomena which are more readily associated with extraterrestrial encounters, such as strange lights in the sky and electromagnetic disturbances, are, surprisingly, often reported in connection to Bigfoot but are generally overlooked. For example, it is claimed that oftentimes electronic malfunctions and mysterious lights accompany Bigfoot sightings but are omitted from official reports, and that mental aberrations during encounters, which later affect the quality of witness testimonies, are commonplace. Combine these examples of crossover phenomena with how so-called Sasquatch tracks often stop in the middle of nowhere, almost as if the creature leaving them disappeared into thin air, and you have the basis of the interdimensional Bigfoot hypothesis. Just like how ghost and extraterrestrial encounters, which are dimension bending by their very nature, are associated with certain types of strange occurrences, so are Bigfoot encounters. Two amateur researchers who believe that Bigfoot are interdimensional and use portals to travel in and out of our reality are Dallas Gilbert and Wayne Burton. In the course of their field research in and around the Appalachian forests, Gilbert and Burton claim to have not merely seen and photographed Bigfoot, but, on one occasion, accidentally walked through a Bigfoot portal and travelled to a strange prehistoric world. 
A self-identified hotspot deep in the mountains of West Virginia is claimed to have been the site of many of their best encounters, including those which resulted in the recording of whoops and howls that are said to be unable to be identified. One of the pair's strangest beliefs is that Bigfoot are not merely capable of dimension hopping, but also communicate telepathically using a sophisticated ancient language. According to the well-regarded paranormal investigators Greg and Dana Newkirk, who accompanied Gilbert and Burton on an investigation in 2012, use of the so-called Bigfoot language resulted in the appearance of a bright green flash of light which illuminated the sky above them. According to their written testimony, they had barely had time to respond to the mysterious light before massive, booming shrieks came thundering from the forest, first from one side of the campfire, then from the other. What followed was a night of terrifying and strange activity, including rocks being tossed from the tree line and the sound of something large charging them from the darkness. And there are plenty others who also believe there is more to Bigfoot reports than a simple flesh and blood creature, with green flashes and other dimensional glitch-like phenomena often being reported by those conducting Bigfoot field research. There are even cases of trance mediums communicating with alleged Bigfoot, similar to how they claim to communicate with spirits of the dead. That said, the notion that Bigfoot are anything other than a species of undiscovered ape is anathema to most researchers, even if the idea does seem to explain neatly the overwhelming lack of physical evidence as to the beast's earthly existence. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more of the paranormal, ensuring you have clicked the bell icon to receive notifications of new content. And also, don't forget to take a look at the link in the description and check out my huge discount on a two-year NordVPN plan. Doing so helps to support my channel and the work that I do. Thank you again. Until next time.